Six Welcome, left. Revelers. This is RBL, right versus left. The left is evil. I'm Rob B. And, and I'm, me, as always. And I'm Brad Lee. And I'm Brian G. And we're here. We're talking about the things that the left is trying to do in this country. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, everything's out there and you get a perspective from normal people. Um, so we can make sure that everybody sees that the left is evil. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're that Two, far separate, one, me and Rob. Zero. Welcome to RBL, right versus left, because the left is evil. I'm Rob B. With me, as always, is Brad Lee. And, of course, we now have Brian G. So, welcome to the show. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, make sure that you go ahead and, uh, as soon as you can, give us five stars. Share us with your friends. Get us out there. We're trying to get monetized so we can bring you better content more frequently. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is something that should be a little interesting. Uh, because the members of the show have slightly differing viewpoints uh, on the topic. So we're going to actually talk about uh, the war in Ukraine and uh, how that should be handled and a little bit about the history leading up to it. So um, this is Rob's topic, so he's going to be kicking it off. So kick it off, Rob. All right. So first, of, first of all, we have to like really take a look at what's going on over there to begin with historically. Um, so you've heard Putin say some things about like their historical connection to Ukraine and that it's integrated with Russia and all that. There is some degree of truth to that because Russia started as the Kievan Rus, which Kiev is the capital of Ukraine now. So they are kind of integrally linked. They're both Slavic people. Um, And basically when the Mongols came across that area, uh, the remaining Rus people fled uh, to the east and to the north and ultimately ended up uh, settling uh, in the Rus territories and ended up uh, founding Moscow and all that. So uh, Moscow is about... 800 and something years old. Kiev is about 2000 years old. So there's a huge difference there. Um, Of course, you know, you go through the Russian empire and they're going out and conquering stuff. They lost part of what was Ukraine to the Mongols and they lost it to the Polish empire and they lost it to the Hungarian empire and the Ottoman empire. So basically Europe was always a, bleep show all the way through history and that part of Europe was no exception but when we get to the modern day norms um, as the Soviet Union was solidifying itself and creating its satellite states uh, kind of a reaction to being invaded in World War I uh, and then again later in World War II the satellite states were meant to be a defensive buffer for Russia Um, So their expectation with the dissolution of the Soviet Union was that NATO would stay out of those countries. We never signed any agreement to that effect. They just kind of expected it. Well, Rob, we never signed, but we did tell them that we would not move east. Right. How many non-written contracts are applicable anywhere? Hey, I'm not disagreeing (laughs) with you, but but I'm just saying, like you, you and I agree on, Putin did have reasons to fear and and he did have excuses. I still don't think he was right, but he did. He did yeah, have some. Well, let's, wait, let's, let's get this right. Let's get no, this. We aren't there yet. Let, Hold on. Let, let, let's get this out. Right. Nobody on this panel is saying that what uh, Putin is doing is right. No one here supports Putin. Just so you right. guys know that. Yeah. None, hey, of, brother. none, none of us are uh, pro Putin's bare chested ass. <laughs> Anyway, so then uh, what did happen, though, at the dissolution of the Soviet Union is Ukraine was left with a lot of Soviet hardware, including a lot of nuclear missiles 
and rockets. And they gave up those nuclear missiles and rockets with a written guarantee from the United States and Russia that their territorial sovereignty would be retained, which included Crimea. So the idea of later going and saying that Crimea wasn't part of Ukraine is kind of asinine, especially since Russia continued to lease the base at Sevastopol from the government of Ukraine a year before he uh, invaded Crimea. He also renewed the contract with Ukraine for Sevastopol for two more years. And initially I thought it was all about Sevastopol, but then things started like unfolding more quickly. Um, When Putin took Crimea, he made the historical argument that it was part of Russia and that it was given to Ukraine under the Soviet Union. Well, it was taken by the Russian Empire from the Ottoman Empire. So if we want to get historical, it should be part of Turkey because the Crimean Tartars that lived there were closer related to the Turks. However, none of them live there anymore, or very few, because they were all forcibly marched to Izhevsk in eastern Russia to work in the Kalishnikov factories. So that's the real history in Crimea. As far as the Donbass, it was the traipsing ground for every army that went back and forth, and they'd stop and collect supplies on the way to invade the major cities in the west. And going east, they'd all stop and collect supplies on the way to go and invade the Russia primary zones. So it was always an important region, but it kind of fell into that whole Russian basin or Ukrainian basin. What it really has to do with is Putin saying all the way back to when he was the mayor of St. Petersburg that he felt the collapse of the Soviet Union was history's greatest strategy. Well, yeah, for them. (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, he felt that it was like a tragedy for the world. So he worked for the next 30 years to whitewash the history of Lenin and Stalin and to kind of glorify what the Soviet Union was. So um, now you you jump forward and whether right or not, NATO claims to be a defensive uh, force. However, they very offensively went into Afghanistan, Iraq, um, what is it, uh, Libya. They offensively went into, um, well, basically a bunch of countries, like in offensive strikes. So can't really be claimed that it's a defensive alliance. NATO has been very aggressive. Oh, the Balkan Wars. So going into Yugoslavia and all that. Um, So this alliance that continues to be aggressive is now annexing the members that used to be part of the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet Union. And so, of course, as we're getting more and more territory on their border and NATO has shown a history going after what they consider bad guys, it's going to make Putin more and more um terrified the first to flirt with it was moldova so what he do he took over part of it called transnitria and planted a bunch of russian troops there georgia was flirting with it so what he do took over south of Sessia and abkhazia planted a bunch of troops there um ukraine starts flirting with uh joining nato what's he do takes Crimea, plants a bunch of troops there and then foments this little frozen war uh, in the east, just like he did with Azerbaijan and um, Armenia, and kind of keeps a frozen war going on there, just enough tension that it never really boils into a full scale war, but it keeps the fighting going, so they're not really focused on Russia. And then eventually he gets to where he decides he just wants to take it because the Ukrainian reforms that are keeping them from joining NATO are beginning to move forward. Um, Unfortunately, part of that was because their current president, Zelensky, was kind of getting authoritarian. He was banning uh, opposition news agencies. He was having his political opposition arrested on charges of corruption. 
But if they were actually corrupt, you could make the argument that he was making pro- progress on corruption. You could also say he was becoming more authoritarian and combine it with the boys down fighting uh, in the Azal region against the, uh, well, let's face it, there are Russian troops over there pretending to be Ukrainians. In the Donbass, it gave him a perfect excuse to say, oh, they're all fascist. We're going to go denazify them and demilitarize them. And NATO kind of has a current uh, uh, track record of if you are in control of all your tar- territory, we aren't going to admit you. They might be able to take a, uh, an exception to uh, uh, Crimea. So now he's just like, OK, there's not going to be a Ukraine. OK, so that's kind of like the histor- historical buildup to the invasion of Ukraine. Wasn't NATO, though, uh, uh, put together to prevent the Soviets from expanding? NATO was uh, an alliance because they. Because they were afraid of the Soviets expanding further west. Because they were just afraid of Soviet war, period, not even necessarily expansionist war. Now, granted, the Soviet Union obviously would have tried to expand, but they weren't just trying to expand necessarily their borders. They were perfectly okay with going and upsetting a government, toppling the government, and installing why they backed um, the communist revolution in China, and they backed the communist revolution in Vietnam, and they backed the communist revolution in Korea. Although that was more China but Russia was still involved. So they were attempting to expand all throughout their existence, either directly or through vassal states. So yes, that is why they were created. Now, the argument could be made, NATO should be dissolved because that Soviet threat's not there anymore. I I absolutely disagree. I think it clearly is there. Yeah, I mean, that's... I think NATO should be dissolved because uh, we're the only ones paying well, that's and not that, totally true that, now. Yeah, well, and that's we're the only ones paying the fair percentage. Yeah, well, well for a long now, time we were. Yeah, now now most of Europe is over the two percent commitment because Russia invaded Trump. Europe, so and yeah. Trump got us was working on getting us there. He took nah, he brought a long way and forced a lot of them to pay. All but five members were still under one percent. Yeah. Trump didn't. But do before a long, long but for a long, long time we were the only ones that were paying. Pretty much anything, us and Germany, <clears throat> and so until the until, until the other countries make their back pay, what's the point? <laughs> that's I not mean, going to happen because that's not how it works. Obviously, it's not going to happen because it's fucking stupid. It's fucking all run by gov- different governments. Well, the the commitment to NATO isn't even to pay into the NATO organization. The commitment to NATO is simply to maintain your military spending at two percent of your GDP. Yeah. So, and obviously you fund your troops taking part in joint exercises. Anyway. Well, now we, now we have negative GDP. Are we going to pay uh, less than 2%? No, but it would be reduced by whatever our GDP has gone down by. Because it, it would still, be, but is it? Our GDP. But we've been paying more than 2% for a long time. Oh, yeah. We're very yeah we got, we always game, will right? until the union other topics. nations kick up. Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. So. Now we're at the point Russia has invaded Ukraine. For how many uh, how many different times is this now? Well, this is their third time. Okay, that's interesting. So actually, if you go through the course of the Soviet yeah. Union and the forced famines and uh, the quelling of revolts and all that, you could say it's like the 10th time. Uh, Russia kind of likes beating up on Ukraine. They always have historically. Well, yeah, they so, think it's theirs. <laughs> yeah, they're picking on their little brother. Anyway, so I am 100% in support of giving, short of nuclear weapons, giving Ukraine whatever they need to fight to defend themselves. Now, I, I, I agree. Uh, and the reason I agree is because I think if we don't do it, then our military ends up getting involved after Russia decides, well, I took over Ukraine so easily, now I'm going to move into Georgia or wherever else, and they keep moving forward. 
then we end up sending troops over and our and our kids start getting killed and we and we're using the resources anyway so might as well give those resources to ukraine so they can so they can fight this war and, and stop russia now and we should just give it to them willy-nilly and not track anything no 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 because now it seems like a good percentage no. of the weapons okay, that they're okay. getting uh, Brad, is going go ahead. You're, you're bringing out opposing viewpoints. So go ahead, Brad. So where are? How do we even know where these weapons are and how they're getting there and where they're going? Okay. Because there's a there's a no. lot there's a lot of concern that at least half of the weapons that are going to Ukraine are not making it to Ukraine and being sold no. to gangsters and terrorists. Now, Brad, I don't think any of us would disagree with that. There's some major issues with how we go about doing some of this stuff. And I think all three of us will agree that there needs to be some kind of tracking and accountability when any of these weapons or, or money is going over to Ukraine because it's a it's a shit show. It's a joke. But yeah, we can't, we I still can't, think I still think it needs to go over to them to help support them. I think well, we just need to add more, absolutely, but okay, Brad, more things to it. If my tax paying dollars are going to that. I want to know where that money's going, where every single dime, every single mm. round, every single weapon is going. And that's not what's going on. Right now, we're depending on Ukraine to tell us where the stuff is going. And it's not working out that well. Okay. So, Brad, you've actually served in a theater of war. Do you think that level of accountability for every freaking thing of another nation's military is even possible? Are you? I know, I know, every, US... I know every single round that I had, I had to keep account for. That's great. The U.S. military lost over $3 trillion over the last decade. So you really think they're going to be able to keep track of everything in an active war? They just gave it away. Hmm. Look, look, they just gave billions away to Afghanistan. So... No, 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 no. I'm saying they literally, in their own budget of what was supposedly spent in the country, have lost what they spent $3 trillion over the last decade on. Okay. So do you think our government is even capable of finding their ass with both hands, much less tracking where this stuff is going? I don't think so. I think they are. I don't. Well, I, don't think our, you, I don't think our government's capable of finding the loops on their shoelaces to tie their shoes. But they're capable of sending trillions and billions of dollars to another country. Yeah, that's easy. Oh, okay. Wire transfers are simple. I do them every week. <laughs> no, it's not just a wire transfer when you're sending weapons and howitzers and fucking ammunition over to another country. Hey, the U.S. has been sending military equipment around the world for a long time. And they now, know where I it is. Much, I would have much preferred that we had sent all this stuff to them before Russia invaded when they were offering to pay for it. I, I think that they should have had that shit in the first place. I agree. So, And that's what and I think that is that doesn't mean that we had to give it to them either. If they don't know how to fucking make a weapon, then I'm sorry. That's their problem. Well, you got it. You got to remember until they kicked out Yanukovych in uh, what was that? 2014. They didn't have any control of their government because they were still a puppet state of uh, Russia. Iraq, kicked, didn't, Iraq didn't have fucking control over their country either. And they still were killing fucking U.S. civilians by the hundreds of thousands. OK, anyway, so we're talking about Ukraine. I'm just saying. I mean, you take a third world country and then you got Ukraine. Okay, Ukraine's not a third world country. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so anyway, they should have been, when they were trying to buy weapons to defend themselves, we should have sold them to them. We sell to democracies all over the world. Even right. if they have co questionable corruption and all of that. Especially if they're next to a fucking it. socialist dictator exactly. like fucking Putin. So we go back to Obama and his non-lethal aid bullshit. Okay. So Obama predicated it. Trump started selling them lethal aid. Biden got it back in power. And Putin got emboldened after our collapse in Afghanistan because our president's a disaster. Mm -hmm. However, that being said, all that's happened. Russia is there now. So your opinion is you don't think we should supply him. We are never going to... end. In the course of the war, we are I don't not say that I didn't say that I don't think that we shouldn't supply them. Not once did I say we shouldn't supply them. Okay, well then, that's it. I mean, we should be supplying them. now. And my, well, I'm saying my, that we should have a fucking tracking record of where the shit's going. Is why? When we, were, when we were shipping Why? Because now terrorists and gangsters are getting our weapons. 
terrorists and gangsters are already getting our weapons whenever they want to. They always have. Oh my God, you're you're ridiculous. Dude, they have. They you're always ridiculous. have. We already funded Iran with millions and millions of pallets upon pallets of cash with Obama. Nothing was going on during Trump. Now, <clears throat> now we're sending, basically, just giving the gangs and the terrorists all the weapons that they need. Okay. Almost every Middle Eastern country, half of their air force, including Iran, is U.S. made planes. Exactly. F fourteens, F thirteens. Why? Because we sold it to them when they were our friends. That's it. So, but Man. so so here's my viewpoint on it. Like when England was fighting Germany and we weren't involved, we were still selling them weapons to keep up the fight. Okay. Because it was obvious Germany was bad, right? Except for the fact that like a third of the country here is doing like they're doing with Russia, where we shouldn't be involved. Um, just leave them alone. Even saying, well, they're going to win anyway, so better to be on their side. Which is what some other people are making. Well, China and Russia can win anyway, so just leave them alone. Yeah, but Russia can't win anyways. They're not going to. Otherwise, they would have already. I, I think. I think if they hadn't been supplied as quickly as they were at the beginning... I think they probably would have fallen. I I just don't see it. At the beginning, so, they were having troubles getting gas to their troops. Yeah, but they can work out. The country that's making its own gas, and they're having troubles getting gas to their own troops. Like, right, but if they if they weren't constantly getting shot at and blown up, they would have eventually gotten the supplies to the front line. And that was because what the civilians there were armed as well, right? Right, but they were getting armed with our weapons and Brian that they Dumbledore. already had. So anyway, we didn't, we didn't just start all of a sudden sending them our weapons before Russia invaded. So so here we're wa- so here we're watching as Putin mobilizes up to a million more troops according to this order. Like he says 300,000 but the actual order it's been revealed says up to a million. Okay? So a couple historical points of context. Do you know when World War II actually started? Nineteen forty-one started in nineteen thirty-five with the Sino, the Second Sino-Japanese War, when Japan invaded with like four, I want to say four hundred thousand troops invaded China. That was the real start of the war because that's where the Pacific Theater of uh, the war started. Okay, I'm not talking about our involvement. When the now, if you track that, that's actually. Seven years before Germany invaded Poland. And when Germany invaded Poland, do you know how many they invaded with? 1.4 million. So by the time they out of their butts and got involved in this war, Japan had 13 million troops and Germany had 17 million. Don't you think it would have been better to help Poland liberate itself when Germany had an army of 1.4 million and Poland? How many times had Poland been invaded? They're like the number one country that has been invaded by multiple people. Uh, Actually, you'd have to put every country in the Middle East on that because they've been invaded by everybody, including each other. (laughs) All through his. (laughs) Okay. So, so uh, Poland, Poland has been invaded multiple times. You would think that they'd figure out that they need to start making arms. Okay, I understand. But we can't we can't rewind time and say you should have. So it's nice that everybody's getting involved in the defense game and realizing that they were falling asleep on the threats around them. Everybody should have been, been, nice. should have been involved in the beginning. Great. Have a That's not reality. That's you. not what happened. It's where we are now. So in World War II, if we had gone then, in... Then why are we supporting stupidity? Because in World War II, if we had gone in when they were in Poland, we would have been fighting 1.4 million Germans instead of 17 million. If we had gone in and supported China quicker, when the first Sino-Chinese uh, War broke out, we may have, never may have dealt with Poland because that was seven years before If we had said, hey, we're not invading other countries anymore and kicked Japan's ass back to their islands, then there probably never would have even been a Pacific theater of operations for World War II. 
and we would have been fighting against 400,000 troops instead of the 17 million and the massive uh, Navy that they built with the resources they were getting. You get you get my point? No. Um, if you don't stop the expansionist empires while they're attacking, when they're small, they just keep getting bigger. Like Russia is right now. Russia's not going to get bigger. Okay, they went in with 200, what, 200,000 troops and they're drafting 300,000. Drafting, so they're forcing them. How many, of, how many of those are going to actually do what Putin wants or die? Okay. Well, Russia's yeah. having a mass exodus right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they're, they are going to field a million people because yeah. these dictatorships do that. They're yeah, that's the one advantage Russia's always had in war is manpower, just flooding the front lines with with people that overtake the enemy. They've always sucked at war, like Rob says. Yeah, I mean, they, they lost, they lost uh, 20 million people in World War II. Yeah. They suffered more casualties than any other country, but technically they were on the winning side. Yeah, I mean, these drafted people, they're supposed to be taking training, equipping, and then sending to the front line. They're just going to equip and send to the front line, even if they, you know, probably right. won't if, even be well, quality products. But Probably probably 100,000 or 200,000 just to give them bodies with guns to try and stall yeah. out the training in advance. Well, they actually train another 200 to 300,000. And is that yeah. training going to be good enough? Doubtful. But when you throw enough bodies at it, sooner or later, you knock down the wall. And that's what they're hoping for. So, yeah, I think, and, and the reality is, like, if Putin does not get punched in the mouth now, what are they going to do? They're going to finish taking over Ukraine. They're going to learn their lessons. They're going to rebuild just like they did after getting, like, kind of, like, dinked and dunked and realized that, yeah, it's going to take a lot of troops to take Ukraine. And then they built up for months before they went in. Well, they've been like fighting that war with Ukraine on the eastern side. So then they decide they're going to surge more troops in. And now they're going to surge more troops again. So the reality is now we're going to be looking at a million Russian troops. Well, it's starting to sound an awful lot like these buildups in World War II, where the U.S. stayed out of it and just watched. Well, the bad guys got bigger and bigger and bigger armies. And sooner or later, they figure out how to win the war. I mean, that's just what's going to happen. And it may take them using nuclear strikes and then God knows what's going to happen. But the reality, but the reality is if they're successful in Ukraine, they're not going to stop. That's a mighty big if. And as, and as, and as soon as, and as soon as they're like going into Latvia and Lithuania and Poland and getting their ass kicked over there, you think then, then when they're actually facing NATO head to head, they're going to hesitate in using nuclear weapons on the battlefield? Nope. No, if they're not stopped in Ukraine, they, they're not stopping. They'll, they'll keep going. So, you know how many... There's they're no already doubt. retreating from Ukraine. You they're know being pushed back. You know how many governments have, have survived a direct confrontation with the, with the NATO? How many governments have survived? Zero. Tell me. Zero. Okay, which ones? Zero. None. Which one? None have survived. Which ones didn't? Which ones Lib got involved and didn't survive? Libya, gone. Iraq, gone. Iraq's still there. Iraq's still a country. Iraq, the, yeah, the government Iraq of Saddam. Iraq is still a country. Saddam, the government of Saddam Hussein's gone. And yes, the gone. Taliban took back over the country, but initially, they got knocked out. When we pulled back out, then they took back over. The There's Taliban. The but, the former, but the former leader of the Taliban is dead and gone. Yeah, in Afghanistan. Yeah. Because you said you were saying Saddam and then you said the yeah, Taliban. I said, <laughs> no, I because I was continuing. Well, that's the thing. You take out one leader, there was, you think there wasn't someone there to take his place? Oh, absolutely. There'll be somebody I mean, come there. Come on. They're, so they're still there. They've survived. Great. So in Another Putin's one. view, but in Putin's view, his government, his leadership, the minute NATO's involved, is over. So it's an existential threat to Russia, and he sees himself as Russia. So then, yes, yeah. he absolutely will use nuclear weapons because he figures, well, if he's going to die, everybody's going to die. If we push into Russia, he will use nuclear weapons. I don't weapons. think we need to push into Russia. Apparently, think, he's going to use, use nuclear weapons anyway. Well, with, with that said, Rob, 
you know that he's forcing the election to for those place for the parts of Ukraine to be annexed into Russia, and then he can call it Russian territory. So if we go into those areas to retake them, then he can use he's he feels he's open to use nuclear weapons because yeah, now we're what? invading Russia. And the voting for that ends what Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they're dragging people out of their house to vote. They're yeah, they're and there's reports that they're dragging people out of the house to have them vote. And if they don't vote for Russia, they're taking down their names. <laughs> yeah, they're being they're being told uh, vote to vote to join Russia, or your whole family's going to be killed in some area. Yeah, yeah. Where, where's those? Where's that? Well, I've I've heard them talking about that. Like I said, Brian oh. or Brad, you need to watch more than just Tucker Carlson. I don't even watch Tucker Carlson. I don't Not. watch any MSM because it's all fucking lies and propaganda. So, like, literally, the reports are out there all over the place. And I've yeah. seen. Well, and I've... Liter literally, there was reports out there that there were no Ukrainian bio labs, there were there were no neo Nazis. And then all of a sudden the story flips and then there's an explanation for it. So it's to me, it's all propaganda. Well, okay. Brett, I'll, I'll say I've never heard a report saying there was no neo-Nazis in Ukraine. I've heard them say oh, that that Mark Zelensky. No, I've heard them say Zelensky is not uh, is not a neo-Nazi because he's a Jew. But I've never heard anyone actually say that and there that, was no neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Just because, just because he's a Jew means that he's not a Nazi sympathizer because. uh oh. Uh, uh, what's his name? God damn it, George Soros. He's a Jew, and and honestly, and he, you can argue that maybe he was, but I don't think he was. Nazis. I don't know anything about him, so I don't care. But all I know, no, is I, we've been lied to a lot about this whole war in Ukraine. <clears throat> a lot. Well, I won't disagree, Brad, that you could argue that maybe Zelensky is. I don't think he was, and I haven't seen any evidence no, that no, he no, was. No, no, hold on, hold on. Brad just made a blanket statement. So, what are some of yeah. the lies you're talking about? Like that Russia was going to invade? That was a lie? No. Like, there were no biochemical weapons labs in Ukraine. It's funny. You can't find an actual official statement about that. Okay. Hold on a second. I just had it up here. Just a <laughs> God damn it. Where did it go? Here we go. <clears throat> you didn't even see any of the UN meetings about this? After months of denial, U.S. admits to running Ukrainian biolabs. Peoplesworld.com. Okay. By whose admission? Washington has been urged to come clean over its biolab program in Ukraine after Department of Defense admits ex its existence. The Department of Defense admit admitted okay. its existence. The Pentagon said on Thursday that it has operated 46 biolabs in Ukraine handling dangerous pathogens after previously dismissing the charges as Russian propaganda. Why? Okay. Cool. Why do I care? Why do you care? Because yeah, why do uh, I care? that was one of the reasons Russia invaded. They didn't want no, biochemical. It, it was not listed in his reasons for invading. It was no, not listed okay. in his reasons for invading. They when they found out that there were bio labs there, they used it as an excuse, but it was not listed as part of his reasons for invading. His reasons for invading was to remove the Nazi leadership and to demilitarize the Ukraine. He said nothing about weapons of mass destruction. He said nothing about and there, weapons and there was weapons in, in the Azov battalion that are neo-Nazis. And, and since you have all this hard data, how many biological weapons were created in these laboratories? Okay, let me hold on. I'll pull it up right here. Let's see if they say anything. So while you're at it, pull up how many biological laboratories they have in Russia. Hold on a second. And then I'm how sure many nuclear do. weapons they have in Russia? Well, Russia's allowed to have Russia's allowed to have nuclear weapons, right? Right. But Ukraine's not, right? You, yeah, Ukraine. So why Ukraine. would they, why would they lie to us about bionuclear weapons in Ukraine and then say, oh, we got them? Well, I haven't and heard apparently about you're out of the loop because you didn't even know that they had them. No, I have not seen an official government statement. I've heard you, the then US you haven't been paying being... attention. They've had UN nations in Congress. Right. They've had these. Well, what are you talking about? You right. haven't heard any official. They've had literally hearings about it. 
and when Washington. Biden and when Biden was and when Biden was saying that Russia was going to invade, they had hearings saying that it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, and then so, Biden but I don't, lifted, I, and then Biden but, also lifted the sanctions on the Nord Stream pipeline to Ru- to Rush, but to Russia. I, but here's my point: I don't care. The country next to them, that's obviously aggressive towards them, has the largest nuclear weapon stockpile on Earth and the largest chemical and biological weapon stockpile on Earth. I don't really care if the country that they're being uh, threatened by and manipulated is wanting to have those weapons to defend themselves. I don't care. That wasn't they weren't there to defend themselves from what Victoria Newland says. Okay, what were they there for? They were saying that they were there to destroy the the biological weapons. No, 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 no. Why did Ukraine have them? Exactly. They were there to destroy them. They were to destroy the biological research. No, why did Ukraine have them to destroy what research? Whose research? Ukrainians, any that they got. Okay, great. So there we go. So why were the Ukrainians? Yeah, but it was a lie because we were funding it and they weren't destroying it. They didn't start destroying it until Russia got over there. Right. You're you're okay with our country lying to us. Happens every day. Why not? Why not be honest? Oh, I agree. Then what are we fucking arguing for? And the minute and the and the minute uh, and the minute Ukraine uh, was invaded and they took uh, Crimea, we should have helped them set up nuclear weapons laboratories because they gave up their nuclear weapons under yeah, the promise that Russia would protect their sovereignty. They weren't part of NATO. No, but the U.S. did guarantee their safety if In they gave up their writing? nuclear weapons. The minute they abandoned that, we had an obligation to return their nuclear weapons. They gave up their nuclear weapons with a guarantee of our protection. So our our obligation is either to give them nuclear weapons, give them back what they gave up following our promise, or our troops go there to take their territory back. We don't have enough troops to go there. No, we don't. So I don't care that they were helping them get WMDs to fight the neighbor who's threatening their existence with WMDs. I don't have a problem with it. I just don't have a problem with it. Do you think do you think Russia would like if they felt they needed to would not drop 100 cruise missiles with Novichok nerve agent on Kiev? I think they would in a heartbeat. But they haven't. Right, because they still want to control the population. When they realize eventually they still think they can win the war. So yeah, the minute the minute uh, the minute uh, Russia starts dropping bo- uh, chemical weapons on Ukraine, I hope Ukraine builds some uh, weapons they can use back. I have no problem with it because R- Russia has shown in every conflict that it's engaged in is that any country they go into, they're going to destroy everything. There will be no Ukraine and there will be no Ukrainians left if they succeed. And that's genocide. And if you're a human being, you cannot support genocide. You do. No, I don't. You say, uh, take them all out. No, what did I say? What you had said. About what? Go in, drop the bomb, take them all out. Right. So I said they took two of our buildings. We should have flattened two of their cities. <laughs> yeah, taking a bunch of innocent people. Right. So the 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 targets in the September 11th uh, attacks were military targets, huh? Uh, they were part of uh, what ISIS, Al Qaeda. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'm saying that that's military targets. So. Um, the World Trade Towers were not part of the military complex. Are you sure? There were 3,000 civilians in there. What What, what was uh, the two towers all about? It was the heart of our economic system. So if you don't have an economic system, you... That's... It has nothing to do with this. No, the, po- the, point, the point is you win a war by making the consequences... So undesirable, you don't make the mistake again. 
So yeah, they flattened. So what? Ru- so what? Ru- so what? Russia is doing is exactly Kabul and that. Kabul should have been flattened, and we never would have had to invade uh, <laughs> Afghanistan. We should have gone over there. We said Taliban did this. Give us the Taliban. They said no. You say okay. Bye bye, Kandahar and Kabul. That's not what happened, though, is it? Nope. But it should have been. And if Russia goes and drops a nuclear weapon and kills a bunch of people in an area, I say okay, we kill a bigger area. And go, you want to keep going? And I'm willing to believe, I'm willing to bet we know exactly where Putin is at all times. Yep. And what's keeping us from him? The threat of nuclear war. Once he starts throwing them, you think he's going to stop with just Ukraine? I, I don't think he has the technology to get any further than Ukraine. He can't even get completely into Ukraine. I don't care how many people he has. He's he's hitting Kiev just fine. Oh, I don't know if he. I don't agree with that. Uh, he he has he's launching rockets to the International Space Station. I I think he has technology enough to launch a rocket and hit the U.S. Yeah, they they proved that plenty of time all through the Cold War that their rockets can hit the U.S. Yeah. I think he, they could hit anywhere in the in the world. Now, do I think they're going to particularly care if uh, they launch a missile at Dallas and it hits Amarillo instead? Nope. No. They'll just launch <laughs> another one and try and get it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the, the reality is, we all know through history, whether it's on the playground or whether it's in the history of war on this planet, if you do not deal with aggressors by making the the pain so severe that you don't think about it again, they do it again. And what Putin's doing is he's pay- so what you're say- so what you're saying is so what you're saying is we should have just taken Russia out a long time ago. I think we should have taken Russia out before World War II was ended. They were well, not our see arguments on that side. Uh, they they were they were not our allies in World War II. They just happened to be fighting the same enemy. There's a yeah. huge difference. And a big part of the reason we dropped the nuclear bombs on Japan is because Russia was moving in from the Northern Islands. And we needed that war to end now. <clears throat> no, but you're when right. We had, that, when but... when we had nuclear bombs. That was when we should have, like, stopped the evil. But that's not what we did. We placated Stalin, who we knew was a nutbag. Then we went on. In 1975, what used to be the imperial uh, rulers of China, who fled to the island of Taiwan in 1975, they reformed their government and became a democracy. How do we reward that? Four years later, we recognized the communists that overthrew the government in a military coup, we recognize them as the legitimate rulers. And how's that working out for us? So, in Iran, our little puppet got overthrown. They elected a new leader. We took him out and installed the Shah. Tried to do our thing instead of recognizing their right. What happened? Look at Iran now. Now the U.S. has always sucked at nation building. Yeah, well, that wasn't even nation building. That was yeah. acknowledging the democratically elected people there because yeah. the dictator was better for us. Mm-hmm. Now in Putin, we've got to re- we've got to recognize he is the democratic leader of that country. He is, so he has a right to rule Russia, but he does not have a right to invade neighbors. <laughs> Sorry, guys, my uh, girl's texting. Give me just a second. (laughs) But yeah, Putin does not have the right to invade neighbors. Yes, he has the right to serve in Russia as long as he keeps it inside Russia. Right. So, but we're supposed to be in an era where countries don't invade other countries for territorial expansion. And that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's why I, you and I agree that uh, we need to stop Russia where they're at. So, in the history of the world, can anybody name any empire that stopped expanding on their own? I can name uh, one. 
Which one are you thinking, sure. Rob? The United States of America. Yeah. The yeah, we're, but we're an empire. Yeah, we're definitely yeah. an empire. We're, we're especially, a constitutional republic. Yeah. We, yes. We However, there empire. there there was very imperialistic tendencies all the way through. But we were uh, not. From, we were never set civil, up as an this, empire. No, let me finish. Years. Let me finish. From 1850 to like, well, basically until World War One, we continued to quiet and acquire. To, try and acquire as many territories as we could, which included the occupation of the Philippines, getting Florida, getting Puerto Rico, uh, getting California. All of that was imperialistic. Whether we're a, whether we're a, a constitutional republic or it is an empire. However, well, the Mexican War, yeah. Yeah. How look at the Mexican War. We stopped and we started drawing back and we started giving these territories the options of ruling themselves, remaining in an association, so we've got way less territory now than we did. And all of those given up voluntarily outside of the U.S. No other empire ever shrank except for by being defeated in war. Yeah, I mean, any that did disappear. They, they stopped existing. Yeah, they, they were defeated in war. Like, like Rome. Yeah, Rome, Rome. Yeah, they got beaten in a bunch of wars and then just kind of carved up their territory. Yeah. I mean, you, we could do we could do many, many shows on what caused Rome to fall. But yeah, they, that's the only way Ro, Ro, uh, Rome stopped is uh, they finally were starting to get defeated. They, they had so many internal issues that took them down. So I'm going to quote a Marvel movie here. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Putin thinks he's right and he's wrong. And that makes him dangerous. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so and no, Putin is wrong. Absolutely, I'll get with you on that okay. one. So, but, but I, and is there? He's. I don't think he's got anywhere the capabilities to do what you guys are afraid of. It's not about what he can accomplish, but it's about yeah. what he will try to do. No, I agree with Rob okay. on that. You, I don't so think you, any you of have us. To re, you have to remember, Brad. Following World War One. Germany was bankrupt and they were kept bankrupt for 20 years because of the punishment that was put Isn't on that them. What we're trying the to do to Russia right now, but it's not working. Okay. Stop what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And why are in, you interrupting like, me? Why? What's going to happen in the next couple of months? Because you've been talking for like a half an hour, bro. <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> anyway. we, okay. So we are doing sanctions following an invasion to try and reel them back. Now, tons of argument can be made that that's not really going to do anything. Okay? Sanctions have on, been on them since 2014. Didn't stop them from invading Ukraine. Okay? They're putting pressure on the population in the hopes that the population will put pressure on Putin. Okay? But that is not the same as what was done to Germany, where they were not allowed to have in industry. They were not allowed to have a military. They were not allowed to have any manufacturing. That is what was done to World War, after World War One to Germany. Okay? So they were that bankrupt, and yet in the span of five years, Hitler built a 1.4 million strong army to invade Poland. Yeah. And then flash forward 10 years later, he had 17 million troops. And why? Because as soon as he started invading, the world did not all stand up to him. No, because he had sympathizers. He had people that <laughs> believed the same way that he believed. Same way yeah, that yeah. he believed. Yeah, exactly. And there, and there are people that are making the argument that we should not waste our time helping. Well, no matter what your reasons for it, it's the same argument that they made for Hitler, that they're making for Putin, that they made for Mao, that they made for... Um, um uh, that is none name? of our business and we should stay out Kim of it. Kim Jong Un. Yeah, exactly. So the bottom the bottom line is when you have evil men, if you don't stand up and stop them, they don't stop. Now the can the is still in place in North Korea, but they didn't keep going. You think they were going to stop at the end of the Korean peninsula? Hell no. But they had to. Holy no. shit. The Portuguese empire lasted from 1415 until 1999. Okay, and? They had to, obviously, they had to stop. 
Yeah, and then, you, then you can go back to Genghis Khan and how long did he fucking rule? And he just yeah, but it's not about like rule. It's about the fact that losing wars is well. No, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm su- just saying, Rob. I'm going through this to find out. The British Empire is still going on, and they're not. They're not make, making any more gains. Right, but actually, well, they're I mean, now not quite a bit. They they actually started voluntarily shrinking. So yeah, they did, but that didn't happen until after World War II either. Whereas, like for example, the Philippines had already voted to be independent, and we were in the process of handing the government back over to them when Japan invaded them. So we ended up going in, liberating from the Japanese, and then helped them finish setting up their own government. And same thing with Samoa. There's two Samoas. There's American Samoa, and then there's Samoa. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the Samoa part wanted to be independent. The American Samoa part wanted to be a territory. They got to determine themselves. Puerto Rico. The empire lasted 200 years. Holy shit. Well, and it can be argued that it lasted longer than that because it just switched to the communist empire or the communist government under socialism. Uh, Lenin just overthrew the Russian empire and took it over. Like, he just he just threw out the czars. <laughs> well, before that, it was fucking, yeah. it was taken over by the Mongols. Yeah, most of it, not all of it. Yeah, like half of it, if that. Yeah, pretty much all of the... Genghis uh, Khan didn't want the fucking frozen tundra. (laughs) Actually, he took most of the frozen tundra. That's why all the people there are Asian. Like, he conquered most of that. Black Death began its reign in Korea and brought the empire into its long, slow decline that culminated with its annexation by Russia in 1783. Uh, What part's that? Uh... Let's see the contig- contiguous empire. Yeah, the Mongol Empire emerged from the unification of Mongol and Turkish tribes under Genghis Khan. The Mongols achieved advancement in various technologies and ideologies during the empire. In 1331, yeah, the, the Black the Death Caribbean began its rampage in Mongolia and brought the empire into its long, slow decline that culminated with its annexation by Russia. Uh huh. Yeah, see, the the British Empire is into Australia. The British, the Africa, British Empire, the British at one uh, empire Canada, at one point held eighty percent of the world. Oh, <laughs> they even held parts of Antarctica. <laughs> mm-hmm. At one point, the British Empire held almost eighty percent of the world. So Why, the British Empire the covered thirteen. Ever. The British Empire covered thirteen point zero one million square miles of land, more than twenty two percent of the Earth's land mass. The empire had four hundred fifty eight million people in nineteen thirty eight, more than twenty percent of the world's population. Uh huh. That's that colonialization we hear. Fucking yeah, colonialists. Sorry, uh, sorry. They 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 at one point owned up to seventy percent of the what we considered civilized world because that wasn't counting all the savage lands in North and South America. So. But yeah, there hasn't been a successful empire. That's the only successful empire. The British Empire. I think you could argue that the Roman Empire was pretty successful. Well, the British Empire is still going on today. <laughs> yes, but the the British Empire is again voluntarily has turned into a more of a benevolent empire, and they are shrinking themselves. I mean, the Roman Empire lasted for almost two thousand years. So, <laughs> well, let's see how long the British does. True. Now we got. Um, now we got the uh, Roman Empire uh, going. So. On. What's that? I said from when the Roman Empire collapsed on. Yeah. Well, that's when the British Empire started? Is that what you're saying, Rob? It was the early foundations of it. Like, yeah. the Vikings swept through and, like, kind of... It's funny that the Vikings had a lot to do with the unification of what's now England. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> so, so what we're saying, we really want... We don't want Putin to go any further. You think that we should go in there and fucking knock Putin out, right? No, I think 
we continue to give Ukraine anything. Let them deal with it. Right. Because the other option is sooner or later, we're fighting 17 million Russian soldiers. I agree. I think what we need, though, is a strong leader to come in and talk to Putin, unlike the one that we have now, who hasn't even had a real meeting with Putin. <laughs> And tell them to look. You need to knock your shit off, or we're gonna. Well, I think all three of us. Yeah, we don't want our leader to go and shit his pants in front of Putin. That's not going to yeah. happen, right? I think exactly. all three of us agree that if if Trump had stayed in office, that this would have never happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not because of what the left claims that uh, he yeah. was in Putin's pocket, but because yeah. of the fact that he was a strong I, I, leader. I, I, well, I the, the same he, reason that the Taliban didn't kill any of our soldiers when Trump was in office. Yeah, he said I'm and gonna the same fight reason that Kim Jong Un <laughs> stopped firing. Nukes. The, just look at Trump dropping the Moab on on Afghanistan. Yeah, he he was serious. If you if you screw with me, I'm gonna I'm gonna screw with you harder. Yeah, that kind of like marked the end of the death of U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. Didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. I don't. I, I mean, can't name any. When you send the Taliban leader a fucking picture of his own house, he kind of fucking gets the hint. Yeah. <laughs> so. um yeah, so I mean that's kind of that's kind of my like feeling on Russia. He's he he's admitted to viewing himself as some Peter the Great wannabe, and yeah, if you don't let if you don't let my only concern is that the weapons aren't getting there fast enough. I don't think fifty percent of the weapons are lost. I think fifty percent of them haven't even been shipped. Oh, it's. I won't disagree with you on that, Rob, and, but I do agree that we need, and you, you, I know you agree too, that we need a lot more tracking, a lot more uh, accountability on these weapons. I, 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 I'm aware of the fog of war and yeah. there's no way we can track the weapons. Without, I know that stuff's going to get lost, ex- stuff's going to get stolen and things well, are going to be taken I, advantage is, of, but is, we still there need There is no way we can even place. attempt, there's no way we can even attempt to track that stuff without putting U.S. personnel on the ground over there and we don't belong there. I do yeah. I agree, but with that. we can, but we can oh, keep track of stuff until it's no, we cannot. The How are we going to do until that? Until it's Put... across, until it's over the border. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and, and here's and here's and here's the thing about the missing weapons. I think they haven't got there. I think our incompetent government, under our incompetent administration I and agree. our incompetent, incontinent president, I doesn't agree. doesn't know where the weapons are. It's not that's that. A... Ukraine's losing them. I don't trust no, our government. Didn't. Our government's losing them. But That's that comes back to the whole point of we need pl- things in place to keep accountability and tracking until it gets to the Ukraine, until it enters Ukraine. No, yeah, that way we at least know these weapons are reaching Ukraine. And then it's up oh, to our, Ukraine from that point to take advantage of the weapons we just gave them. Our, our country is very much capable of all of that. What, let's, no, no. Okay, our so our let's, country let's is. Our that. government is not. Stop that. They are. They are. Otherwise, they wouldn't know what they're sending them. Here's one thing that we need to ask: what What kind of weapons were the Ukrainians using before? What What kind of weapons are they used to? So all the old Soviet, Soviet era, crap. right? Yeah, so yeah. what are what are the odds that the Ukrainians are getting the weapons, but the ones that they can't use because they don't know how that they're selling? We. What do you think the odds of that are? I think that's part of the reason for the slow distribution of the more modern weapons because they're taking the time to train people, which so is why there's, there's a, there's which a, is why there are troops training in England as we speak on how to use modern warfare. Well, not just England that. too. I mean, Four. there's Turkey and other places there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. no. Well, I mean, there was just a big video expose on the training going on in England. That's why I specifically mentioned yeah. that. If anyone can Google Ukrainian troops training in England and see it. Right, but that's also they're how also they're pushing Russia too. back is because we've trained them on some of these weapons and they've taken advantage of the training. Yeah, the, hi, the high Mars have actually like crippled their logistics and destroyed like half of their weapons. So yeah, like kudos. I don't think we should be trying to tell them you can't hit Russian territory because they'll just move their supply depots to the other side of the Russian border and be safe. Oh, that's fucking absolutely. stupid. Absolutely, they should be fucking trying to go into Russia. Obviously, well, that's, that's no. Nope. I, I don't. I don't think they should. I think they should march all the way up to their border and keep fucking hammering anything military anywhere near the border until well, Putin says, okay, we stop. We give up. Well, no, I agree because you just have to look at Vietnam or Korea and, and you can see that was the major issues we had is uh, the troops would attack us and they'd back across the border and we wouldn't go after them. So 
I mean, you could argue in Vietnam that we never actually lost a major conflict, that we went in, we fought, and then we took off and went back to base. Yeah, so we they go just and moved back in. The same fucking hilltop. Same so time. what's funny we is they won saying, pretty much they every battle, we were, but we lost the war because of that. In, we in Vietnam, the they were the saying that we were acting like Russian troops going in and raping their women and fucking doing all kinds of bullshit. Well, there was some of that going on, yes. Oh, I'm not, or I'm, a lot. Don't doubt that. In one Vietnam. That's it was a yeah, lot of disgusting things. That was the problem with the with the forcing people into the war compared to now where everybody's a volunteer. Well, what what was it uh, from uh, Braveheart? Another movie reference here. Oh boy! The easiest way to get the Scots out of Scotland is to breed them out. To breed them out, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeez. So I think that's what Russia's trying to sure. do. They're moving Ukrainians out. They're trying to breed the ones that remain. They're trying to kill the men and impregnate the women. Well, the problem we have here is exactly what we're Tuesday. We're going to find out Tuesday. We're going to find out a lot of shit. We're not going to uh, about the voting today, because all like, we're going like, to find out is they because, because like Brian was saying that once they decide that they're going to annex the Donbass region to be a part of Russia and then they start attacking the Donbass, then they're going to be like, you fuck with Russia. So now we're going to start fucking launching dropping lot nukes on you and we're yeah. gonna find out how fucking ballsy putin really is right. and whether it's really the start of world war three dude i don't know if you yeah. listened to his last speech but man he sounded like he was not doing so well well like rob and i have talked about many times is putin's in major trouble at home and internationally he oh yeah it was, seems like people are having hard times fucking going downstairs and shit no, oh, yeah, he's literally he got scolded by G, then he got scolded by Modi. Yeah. 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 Like he's looking like a fool on the world stage, even to the people yeah. that are dealing business with him. Yep. So I mean, I think I think um I mean I think it would have been nice if we could have gotten them weapons faster, but the reality is most of our weapons they don't know how to use, so it wouldn't have been practical. But no, I, think, I think it would have been I think it would have been better if this could have all been prevented before. You don't yeah. lift. You don't lift the sanctions that were already on yeah. Russia. Yeah, and you don't just fucking evacuate Afghanistan like you're fucking retreating because you're getting your fucking. Hey, Brad, all three of us, I think, totally agree with you yeah. on those. Right, and, and they should have crippled the Russian economy, uh, the economy indefinitely until they got out of uh, uh, Crimea, and they should have. That's what they. That's what they should have done. Fucking- and but they, they shouldn't have lifted the sanctions on that fucking bridge every fucking five days until they stopped trying to build a bridge to Crimea. And yeah. they shouldn't they shouldn't have lifted the sanctions on Russia. Even even Zelensky himself said, "You lifting these sanctions are the reason why Putin is coming into Ukraine." <laughs> well, they should have never let back in Obama's time let uh, Russia take over Crimea and keep it. Yeah, but mm-hmm. how many things did Obama do? Or, uh, or Georgia in Obama Bush. Joke. He was he was one of the worst presidents we've ever had. Bush in Georgia. He didn't do shit about Bush and uh, about Georgia, and we had a military base there at the time. And the Russian troops just went around our military base. Oh yeah, no, I I think Bush. I I was never a big supporter of Bush. I, yeah. I think he was far he was too better liberal than the opposition, <laughs> and he screwed up. I mean, I think he was a hell of a lot better than Obama, and I think he. I don't disagree with him going in Afghanistan and even Iraq, but I think you can have big arguments on that. But but I hey. think. The my problem favorite, with Afghanistan is how the plan my, changed. My once favorite line: out. See, they practice they practice this uh, mostly peaceful protest thing all yeah. the way to uh, the Iraq War when they were standing next to nuclear centrifuges that were hurriedly buried in the desert in yeah. uh, Iraq, yeah. going, yeah. "There are no weapons of mass destruction or nuclear yeah. production cap- capabilities here." While they're oh. standing next to uh, like fifty centrifuges that they just dug up in the desert. Rob, we could have way. people are still we could have shows, by that today. We could have yeah. shows about and, and, Iraq and then, and then and the, the, the weapons of mass weapons destruction that were used in Syria. Where what what was the chemical signature on them? Oh yeah, yeah. they were the yeah. Iraqi chemical signature. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. we can have huge. We can have many shows on on the mass destruction weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and yeah. where yeah. they I mean, went to, what happened to them because we know they had them. They used them. Yeah, oh, we found Hello, them. They chemical used Ali. Them. Chemical yeah. Ali, you, you, you exploded used mustard them on gas on his whole people. Yeah, they used them on the Kurds. Yeah, well, and then, and then <laughs> they found the only thing they did to the Kurds. The no, no, yeah. The, uh, they, they slapped stickers on them that said farm chemicals. See, they're just farm chemicals, not weapons yeah. of mass destruction. No, I agree. And, and why were they able to do all of that? 
Because we told was, them we were coming over looking for them. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we could go into this and this, but it's not what the show's about this time. So, well, it, yeah, it, and that one goes all the way back to uh, uh, the first Bush bowing to uh, pressure and not taking out that dickhead dictator in the first place. Right. Okay. And then, you can, and then you can take then you can take Kuwait and compare it to what's going on in Ukraine right now because basically Kuwait was Ukraine and Iraq was Russia. Yeah. Well, the problem was the problem in uh, Kuwait was Saddam grabbed all that shit in like twenty four hours. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it was there was, was no was, way. To, it was a lot was, smaller than Ukraine. But. Yeah. There was no way to arm them to repel the invasion. So. Yeah. We, we set the president there that we're not going to let you snatch a neighbor, neighbor's territory. And the reason why Putin's doing this is because we failed in Moldova, we failed in Georgia, we failed in Ukraine. And so now they're going to Ukraine again. And it's only a matter of time before they go all across the world if we let them. And no, they do not have the ability to do it now, but they sure do have the ability to keep arming up and taking peace after, after peace. Yeah, and the way our military is going, it, it's not going to be hard to take us out. Yeah, what are we get? What are we going to do? Give them a drag show to fight them back? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, you know, the Aryans aren't going to be allowed to be able to fight in our fucking army. Have you seen some of the drag shows here? That might scare off some some enemy soldiers there. No, they'll just kill them. <laughs> <laughs> they'll look and be like, what? "This is easy target right here." <laughs> okay, let me reevaluate my position on sending in our military. <laughs> Yeah. All drag units only. <laughs> I can't. I can't think of a better way to end the show than all drag units only. Yep, that's oh, it. This is abort those people. <laughs> all right, so you guys have a great night. Thanks. I think it was a good show, a good discussion. Um, I, I love that we had some back and forth because there is some degree of disagreement. I mean, obviously, we agree on the overall point that Putin's a douchebag. Um, but you know. The part that I didn't throw in there is that I did live there for two years. So that's why my perspective is kind of like the Russian mentality is take, take, take until somebody and, stops taking. And that's just the Russian mentality. That's why the mob took control of the country after the fall of the Soviet Union. That's why the communists took over the whole country. That's why the czar took over before that. Like, that's just the way it is. That's the Russian mentality. Take until somebody stops you from taking um, so, uh, we're kind of in agreement that Putin's a douchebag, but that's where I stand on that. Uh, Brian, do you have any <laughs> final thoughts? Well, uh, just, you know, Brad did mention your time in Russia and, 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 uh, Ukraine, uh, in his rant, just so you know, uh, I think you and I agree pretty much on a lot of that. Putin did have his reasons or excuses to go in. We both all think he was wrong. Uh, I think we do need to arm and keep arming the ukrainians that's where brad and and us disagree a, a bit uh if we don't russia keeps moving forward and they move until they move into the next country and then we get involved and now our people are dying it's u.s blood on the ground because we won't have a choice just like world war one world war two where eventually we'd have to go in where if we arm ukraine and they're able to stop russia which it looks like they are until russia decides to throw nukes at them uh, if they're able to stop them, then we can keep our boys from having to go over there and die in the process of trying to defeat Russia. Yep, and I can't wait to see what the Ukrainians do with battlefield nukes. No, oh, jeez. Brad, what do you got to say? Uh, you know, uh, Putin needs to be stopped. I don't think he's going to... I don't. The way things are going now, I don't think he's going to... He's going to be forced to use battlefield nukes like Rob was just saying that he'd like to see how Ukraine utilizes it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly I just, what I, I, don't, I, I don't, think he's going to and we need see, to give him the fight back. I just, I just don't see uh, Putin going any further. I don't think he has the support of the people in his own country. Not anymore. Let, let alone the, the, the bordering countries, I don't think. And some of them are supported by NATO, right? So eventually NATO is going to be involved. And that is going to involve some of our troops. I hope it doesn't come to that, but the way it's going right now, I mean, this, like we said, this could have been all prevented. And okay. I think that's where it should have been prevented. And, and I want to, so I want to take one last little poll. That's, that's where I, that's where I stand. Um, I think that I certainly think that we should be uh, arming Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. I find it uh, just more accountability. I, I find it, I find it, odd that we think that the civilians of ukraine should be able to have weapons but our own 
Civil, yeah. civil oh, that's another topic. Topic. Agreed. But, we'll do it. We'll do a two A show here soon. But anyways, that's that's where I stand. I think we need accountability of the weapons and where the money hey, is going. And it should have been that way. We can also do a whole show on defending Ukraine's borders, but not our own. So and I th- and I think that uh that the Ukraine that could be part of the next show. Had, I think the Ukrainians should have had training on the weapons that we were sending them before we sent them the weapons, but we all agree. That's neither. That's neither here nor there. Uh, definitely, Ukraine. And I think should be, be, I think should country. be mentioned. Some of that aid is not actually going to Ukraine. It's going to their neighbors who are sending them Soviet equipment, and we're replacing their stuff with our equipment. I'm glad I got to finish my explanation. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, well, I, thanks, for, thanks for the good show, you guys. Um, that was great. All the revelers out there, thanks for listening. Again, make sure to share us. We're getting really close to being monetized, but we need you guys to help us out. Uh, make sure that you're listening. Make sure that you're sharing it with other people so they listen. Um, cyber begging. Huh? It, <laughs> just, you know, I had a lot of mic issues. That's why I wasn't there a lot of it. <laughs> he ate his mic. That's what he's saying. Anyway. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's made of chocolate. <laughs> It better be white chocolate, God damn it. <laughs> Hey, I know you don't have anything against the... Uh... <laughs>